Occasionally, a Lipus or Panasonic throw up a lens that epitomizes the Micro Four Thirds system's unique selling point, its balance of image quality and size. A great example is the Olympus 40-150mm f2.8. It could be made for APS-C or full frame cameras, but it would be impractically big, expensive or both. Now here's another, the Panasonic 100-400mm f4-f6.3 to F6 zoom. A zoom lens for full frame cameras with a horizontal angle of view of 2.6 degrees or 16 times magnification, like the Sigma 300 to 800 mm, comes in at four times the price, six times the weight, and five times the length. I know they are not directly comparable, but for the photographer committed to his format, they do the same job. Lenses like this 1 to 400 and Panasonic's new 12 mm f1.4 say to me that Micro Four Thirds is rapidly maturing and pleasingly, given the cost of developing such lenses, the manufacturers must have confidence in the future of the system. So let's take a look. It's a handsome beast, like Olympus's 40-150 Pro Zoom, and like that lens feels solid, workmanlike and serious. Professional, you could say. It's an interesting lens too, with more knobs and switches than most. There's an on-off switch for the built-in stabilisation, a manual or autofocus switch and a focus range limiter. The 1 to 400 focuses down to 1.3 meters or about 4 feet and that necessitates an enormous amount of internal lens movement from there to infinity. If that 5 meters sounds distant remember that at 400 millimeter and 5 meters range you have the image size you would get with a 25 millimeter standard lens at 12 inches or 30 centimeters. There's a removable and reversible tripod mount and very usefully a separate knob so the camera can be portrait oriented. The lens feels substantial but weighs less than a kilo so in spite of its power it is not a burden to carry around. There's a long trombone slide movement as the focal length lengthens so Panasonic have fitted a lock ring to prevent the zoom extending when being carried. We have a built-in sliding lens hood for use at long focal lengths and a supplied accessory one, much longer, for effective shading at shorter focal lengths. All in all, this is a thoroughly well designed and thought through lens. In use, I have one criticism which I'll air first. The zoom ring on my example is quite stiff. It's not like it needs two hands to turn it or anything, but with the lens hands held to your eye, it's not conducive to smooth zooming. Certainly there's no need for a zoom lock. I've asked around and the stiffness seems to be present on some lenses and not others. It may loosen up with use, but for anyone buying one I'd advise to check the zoom action before taking it away. Otherwise the lens is an object lesson in thoughtful design. The three switches are nicely to hand and the focus and zoom rings are wide and grippy. With a lens this size the barrel will often obstruct a tripod mount, so the tripod extension is welcome. Not only that, if the camera's tripod mount is used, a lens like this can put quite a strain on the bottom panel. It can be reversed for getting best balance with different Micro Four Thirds bodies, and removed if you wish. I can't see many people removing it, as it provides rather a good steady grip for hand holding. A final observation about using a lens with such magnification. Even with a static subject, you can find yourself hosing the lens around trying to locate and frame it. 16 times magnification is a seriously long reach and I find myself often zooming back to 100mm to locate the subject and then zooming in and framing. The most obvious use for such a powerful piece of glass is to photograph distant animals and objects. A 1 to 400mm is perfect for that. But a big bonus and the real trick for me is the perspective control it gives you. It sees differently. I put it through its paces in central London beside the Thames and just let the lens find pictures for me. The steep, dramatic perspective it can deliver is thrilling. So, we have a lens whose features and design are first rate. What about performance? A lens of this price and spec is going to be used by serious photographers. Birders and wildlife lovers come to mind. It's weather sealed, so no need to worry about using it in the wet, provided you keep raindrops off the front element, of course. To judge sharpness, I thought I'd show you 100% crops of a series of critically sharp shots of birds in flight, chasing and catching prey, kingfishers and gannets diving into water, and emerging with struggling fish, 
sparrowhawks grabbing their prey from the air, a peregrine falcon diving at 250 miles an hour. But in the end, that seemed a little show-offy and self-indulgent. So here are some shots of a neighbour's roof. At every focal length, all wide open, the lens is very sharp. The testing point with any zoom is always the longest focal length, but the Panasonic not only holds up, it excels. And while not as sharp at 400mm, it remains very, very sharp. Basically, there is no reason at all to stop this lens down, or hesitate to use the longest focal lengths, as I would do with a Panasonic 1-300mm for example. Here's a quick comparison with the Olympus Pro Zoom at 150mm to 8. As you can see, they're pretty much neck and neck, that is, usable through the entire range at maximum aperture. Looking back to my Nikon film camera days, it was not always so. Focusing, well that stopped me in my tracks. There's a lot of heavy internal lens element movement for a big lens like this. The fact is, it focuses as if it were a 25mm. Even at 400mm, press the shutter and it's in focus. On single AF here, I focused on this cyclist at maybe 150 metres away, took my finger off the button and fired again when he was about 10 metres away. Focus is instantaneous and both shots are sharp, even at 100%. The distant one looks less critically sharp, that's the heat haze, and what a lovely effect it is. This sequence shows how the constant autofocus works, and boy does it work. This is a sequence of 40 frames over about 7 seconds. The shots are not just sharp, except for two off focus, they're critically sharp. What seems new here is how fast the focus is recovered after losing the plot. That's improved depth from defocus technology, I presume. This performance didn't just stop me in my tracks, it made a good job of stopping the cyclists too. This wasn't a fluke. I have several sequences exhibiting the same level of accuracy. It's stunning. There's no distortion to be seen, flares non-existent, and purple fringing seems to be absent in the pics I took at least. Which leaves the lens stabilisation. This is getting boring, it's superb. Stabilisation on a pen F body seemed about the same whether I used the body or lens facility, and 1 60th was possible with both. On a GX8 or GX80 body with dual stabilisation, I did manage to get it down to a 30th with acceptable repeatability, but that's for headbangers really, and I'd prefer to use at least one 250th, just for ease of mind. So, what have we here? An optically and functionally state-of-the-art extreme telephoto zoom. It fully merits the illustrious Panasonic Leica name for its performance, and its price too. The only enhancement I could think of for this optic would be a fixed f4 aperture right through the zoom range. I actually wouldn't want that though, because that extra stop and a half at 400mm would change the nature of the lens. What system other than Micro Four Thirds could give you an extreme lens like this that wouldn't necessitate buying a bigger camera bag, or more likely an extra bag just for the lens? A constant aperture f4 would take such a lens outside the acceptable size for a system that majors on compactness. Its only real competition is Olympus's superb 300mm f4 Pro lens. That's a lot more expensive, and while a stop faster at 300mm, of less use to most photographers being bigger and even more specialised. Turning a zoom ring, even the stiff one on my 1-400, to to a given image size on sensor, is a whole lot quicker, easier and quieter than walking to match it with a fixed focal length lens. There's Panasonic's 1-300, to but that's in a different class really. Nonetheless, if finances don't run to the price of the 1-400, to it's a viable alternative. The other seeming competitor isn't really. I've had a number of photographers asking my advice on whether they should buy this or the Olympus 40-150mm f2.8 Pro. The answer is, the fact that you ask the question means you want the 40 to 150. That's a general purpose lens, whereas this 1 to 400 is most definitely a specialist item. A lens like this is for birders or extreme sports like surfing, subjects you cannot physically approach, or which may eat you if you do. 
Although it's a 1 to 400 mm, it's the 2 to 400 mm range that will get used most. For example, with my 40 to 150, I normally just stick it on 150 mm and zoom back if I really need to. With this, I stick it on 400 mm and rein in reluctantly. Seeing birds and people and London landmarks through a 400 mm lens on micro four thirds is electrifying and extreme, and I really love it. However, this is not a lens to be bought or used on a whim. It is a highly specialised piece of glass. In effect, it is like taking pictures through a powerful telescope. If you need what it does, it's not expensive, it's a good buy. If you don't, once the novelty is worn off, it'll just be excess weight in your bag or on a shelf at home. Meaning, for me, Panasonic's 1-400 to is probably the best lens I'll never buy. Mind you, I could always sell National Geographic my sequence of a golden eagle in aerial combat with a condor over Machu Picchu to finance it. 50 thrilling shots with the 1-400 to on full extension as the bursts chase and dive at high speed and every single frame pin sharp to the last flying feather. I'd love for you to have seen them, but as I said, it would just be too show-offy. Thanks for watching.